Welcome to this week's Instructional Design Skills Module on using the modality effect and the redundancy effect to our advantage. In this module, I'll first give a good overview of the modality effect and the redundancy effect, and then I will outline some specific ways that we can utilize them in our instructional design. After completing this module, you should be able to define the modality effect and the redundancy effect, and describe a plan to utilize the modality effect and the redundancy effect in designing your instruction. We've all experienced it. Someone presents a PowerPoint on an otherwise interesting topic, but it becomes painful to listen to because they are simply reading off of their slides. It's not quite so unbearable when it's just one slide like this one, but imagine a presentation of nothing but this. Pretty annoying, huh? Prior to this module, you should have read the article assigned for this week, Nine Ways to Reduce Cognitive Load in Multimedia Learning. We are focusing specifically on the modality effect and the redundancy effect this week. And first, we're going to recap what the article had to say on these topics. This week's article defines the modality effect as better transfer when words are presented as narration rather than as on-screen text. Think back to a time when there was a lot of stuff happening on the screen that you had to watch. Or you had to look back and forth constantly, maybe a video with on-screen text flowing at the bottom, like a silent movie. This is a lot to take in through only sight. Or to put it another way, one channel is overloaded. You might have to stop and restart the video, or you may simply end up missing things. Our article calls this the split attention effect because the learner has to split between reading and watching. The solution is to offload some of the work to the ears or the verbal channel. This levels out how much work the channels are having to do, allowing the learner to take everything in easier and be better able to process the information and integrate it with existing knowledge. This week's article defines the redundancy effect as better transfer when words are presented as narration rather than as narration and on-screen text. This is pretty similar to the modality effect, but our focus for this one is on the root word redundant. We don't need on-screen text and narration to get our point across. The solution is to have little to no text on the screen using narration instead, and not to read long sentences. Cue words or short definitions are fine. They can help learners to organize their learning and take notes. However, reading to your learners off of a slide and narrating to long paragraphs of text is not the appropriate method for increasing learner transfer. Let's recap. The modality effect tells us that using narration rather than on-screen text results in better transfer. Knowing this, we can apply this information to our instructional design by minimizing text and using narration when appropriate. The redundancy effect tells us that using narration rather than on-screen text and narration results in better transfer. Minimizing text and using narration to convey information to our learners can help us to increase the quality of our instructional design and improve transfer. There are a few next steps to complete in preparation for next week's module. First, post a response to the discussion prompt on the Instructional Designer's Chatter page. Second, prior to next week's module, you should review the information on segmentation and signaling in this week's article. Congratulations! You have completed this lesson. You should now be able to define the modality effect and the redundancy effect and describe how you will utilize the modality effect and the redundancy effect in designing your instruction. As always, feel free to reach out with any questions or feedback. Happy training! Mm -hmm.